here to discuss the impact of the war on European security and economy is Estonia's Prime Minister, Kaha Kallas. Hello to you. Thank you for joining us on the programme this morning. Um, you've seen, obviously, the developing um, situation in Ukraine this morning and the games, the war games that are going play, uh, taking place in Moscow. Uh, give me your overview of the situation there at the moment. Well, this war has been going on for six months already, and and of course uh, Russia is is uh, threatening more, is is more aggressive than ever, uh, because they are clearly uh, not winning this war as they expected uh, to be a very short uh, short uh, uh, period of time when they achieve their goals. Uh, what is important uh, here is that we keep on isolating Russia and we keep on uh, pushing them so that they would go back to its borders and, and withdraw the aggression. We have to support Ukraine uh, every way we can uh, so that they can win this war, because if aggression pays off uh, somewhere, it uh, serves as an invitation to use it elsewhere. What happens? Do you think? What happened? Do you think six months ago? What convinced Putin um, that he should take this opportunistic approach? Did he feel that it was the situation that we saw unfolding in Afghanistan and the withdrawal of troops there, or did he perhaps look at the um, the breakup of the European Union not only with what the UK was doing, but also Italy looking at potentially leaving the EU as well? What do you think was in his mind? Uh, well, uh, of course, uh, it has been a long plan. I mean, they haven't been uh, very secretive about their imperialistic dreams. When the Soviet Union collapsed, its uh, imperialistic uh, ambition never did. Uh, and, and Putin has been very clear about this all along. Uh, what has happened is that uh, uh, when uh, Russia attacked uh, Georgia, uh, Crimea, uh, Donbas, then nothing happened uh, to them. Uh, I mean, they were not punished for the aggression. So uh, the message they got was that this pays off because uh, eventually they have more territories and every time with every uh, next step they have been bolder and of course uh, all the political uh, situation um, government changing in in Germany uh, also uh, the um, energy crisis that was building up and actually uh, was uh, influenced by the deeds of, of Russia not giving uh, enough gas to Europe uh, all these things are uh, making a perfect storm so that they would take and and did take uh, an another step. But right now, it's very important that uh, we do everything that this aggression does not pay off and, and they are punished for the war crimes and aggression crimes committed. I see that the Russian Defence Minister has been speaking this morning, looking at it via the uh, Reuters news agency, saying that uh, the slowdown in pace in the offensive in Ukraine is uh, deliberate so that there will be fewer uh, civilian casualties. Do you think it is? Well, uh, if you look at their um, their way of uh, of operating, then they have been attacking civilian uh, uh, civilians. Uh, it is a war crime according to international law uh, when you target civilians. What we saw in Mariupol was a complete uh, destruction of the whole city, and especially bombing hospitals, bombing uh, places where there were marks that they here are the children. Um, but um, so so. We shouldn't, we shouldn't listen to what they are saying. It's an information operation, but uh, we should look at what they are doing. And what we see happening in Ukraine is uh, completely uh, vice versa. They are attacking civilians. Britain sent an extra 1,000 troops into Estonia last month. I think that's brought that up to 3,000 in total. We know that the Armed Forces Minister, James Heapy, on the programme earlier on this morning has just returned from Estonia. Um, what more do you need from the UK for your people to feel safe, uh, safe against the aggressor just across the border? First of all, we are very grateful for Britain to uh, be our framework country. So uh, we have had very good cooperation uh, with Great Britain and, and the troops here present working together with our own defence forces have been a very 
good deterrent for, for Russia as well, uh, that attacking us would also mean attacking UK or France or the other countries who are present here. Uh, therefore, we are very grateful. Uh, from uh, the Madrid summit this summer, we got very strong decisions so that we are building up a division-sized uh, headquarters here in Estonia and, and, and also uh, Britain is uh, contributing uh, to, to helping us do that and, and allocating uh, some troops that are actually stationed in UK but uh, are ready to come uh, to our aid if necessary and this is all needed uh, so that it would never be uh, necessary in, in reality, that it would act as a deterrent. Uh, a quick thought, if I may ask you before um, we let you go. You called on the EU to stop issuing tourist visas to Russians and we've heard from the EU's foreign policy chief. He's rejected uh, that call. Um, do you think they are potentially being blind to um, any danger that Estonia might face? Um, the visa ban that we were calling for uh, is because we have a sanction put in place so that there is no air travel between Europe and Russia. And, and the, so the Russian tourists are traveling via the land borders. And only Finland, Estonia and Latvia have land borders with, uh, uh, with the Russia. So we are bearing the burden, really. And the problem is that we don't, uh, we are not able to check all the tourists that come and we see that they pose a security threat. And I think also that uh, uh, traveling uh, or being a tourist traveling to Europe is not the human right, it's a privilege. And while your country is waging a war on Ukraine, the citizens of that country are also uh, responsible for their country's deeds. And therefore the visa ban could have an effect so that this war would end. Because only 10% of uh, Russian uh, citizens actually uh, travel abroad and they are from Moscow and St. Petersburg. So uh, they, these people also have influence uh, on uh, Kremlin's decisions. So if they are uh, feeling this on, on, on their skin, if I, if I may say so, then uh, they would put the pressure also on Kremlin. Uh, Prime Minister of Estonia, thank you very much indeed for joining us.